Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flatirons Tuning Question of the Week. This week our question comes from Joe on Instagram who wants to know about building a 5-speed transmission versus swapping to an STI 6-speed. Yeah, and we, this is a question that we actually get pretty pretty often. You know, can you can you do something, can you put gears into a 5-speed transmission, can you do anything to a 5-speed transmission to get it to be as strong as a 6-speed? And in, in the case of Joe, he specifically has done this. He's got a PPG first through fourth gears, and he put in a Torsen front differential, and he really likes that that setup. But that's I think that's why he was asking about that. Um, I mean, maybe before we, we contrast them, there are some advantages to a five speed. Just just broad strokes, it is a lighter transmission. It, you're, the five speed transmission weighs about eighty pounds less than the six-speed transmission. So there's weight savings there. And the the one thing that's odd with the six-speed is that the extra gear, the sixth gear, Subaru didn't put it up top. It's not an, it's not an extra overdriven gear. They put it at the very bottom. You have an extra granny gear. So you have an extra gear, but like the, the usability of that extra gear is a little bit, I don't know, it's not as, not as easy to use. And having the taller first, First gear ratios that the five speeds use for some things is is better. Um, there's a lot more rowing, a lot more shifting with the six speed compared to the five speed. So I mean, it, to a certain extent, it's understandable where this comes up. You know, especially if you have a five speed, you like the ratios, you like driving with it. Um, you know, do, do you really have to swap to a six speed? Let's talk about cost differences off the off the bat. It turns out that it's pretty expensive to build up a five speed. Um, we're gonna for this. For the sake of this, we're going to say we're going to use PPG gears because that's that's what Joe had used, and I just looked around and basically PPG first through fourth helical gears right now. This is just the parts. Thirty four hundred dollars is what I found on the internet today. Now uh, he mentioned uh, putting a uh, torque rising diff up front, which you know again if you want to really get you know close to the performance of a six speed with a five speed, having some kind of a front diff is going to be a big part of that. So I think that's fair. That's I'm I'm gonna put that as a ballpark of a thousand dollars because a Cusco diff you might be able to find a torque biasing diff in that ballpark. So a thousand dollars. We know from from helping people rebuild the five speeds. A lot of times you have to replace bearings. Most of the time you want to replace most, if not all, of your synchros at the same time uh, that you're rebuilding your five speed. So everything is going to be new. That's about another thousand dollars on top of whatever gear set you're going to use. Um, and then the last bit is it's pretty labor intensive to rebuild a five speed. It does take a, a decent amount of time. And I would say that the, the general ballpark for the labor just to rebuild that five speed is going to be about twelve to fifteen hundred dollars. So if we take all of those numbers and we add them up to build your five speed, it's going to be in the ballpark of about sixty nine hundred dollars. That, that's what we came up with. And depending on if there's other issues or anything else, I mean, like issues with the center diff. We haven't even talked about the center diff. Um, um, it could be a little bit more than that. So looking at some costs from our website, our kit, what's the bare minimum you could spend on doing a six-speed swap? Yeah, we, we looked at an 0405 STI swap kit on our website with, with a minimum of parts, and that came out to be $7,400, which is $500 more than, than this estimate for the built five-speed. But on our website, that cost includes freight shipping because the six speed is uh, 230 pounds, 240 pounds, which has to go truck freight, which is pretty expensive. So we just include that in the cost of all those kits. So if you take the truck freight out of it, it's almost exactly the same, about $6,900, $7,000 for the six, minimum six speed swap parts to go into a WRX that would have that five speed. Honestly, I was surprised how expensive it was. And in fact, this is just the first through fourth gear set. We found an Albin's first through fifth gear set, which is like the gear set alone is, I think it was uh, $4,200. Yeah. So if you add that into the, the equation, then it's almost an, another thousand dollars. You're, you're almost at $7,000 or $8,000, sorry, just to build your five speed. In a used case. In a used case, pretty much everything new, I mean, but not, not new shift forks. So if the costs are broadly similar, what would be some advantages of keeping the five-speed advantages of 
switching to a six speed. The biggest advantage of the five speed, like we said in the beginning, is the weight. Like if, if you really need to save every pound that you can, saving that 80 pounds with the five speed is advantageous. And if you're doing something with the car where the ratios in the five speed are just way better um, and work better for what you're doing with the car compared to the six speed, that's where maybe the six speed swap just doesn't doesn't quite fit with what you're doing. Just over over time, what we saw in talking to people and seeing people that were that had built five speeds, um, they are just not as reliable as six speeds. You know, once you get a year or two in, or if you're really using the car for motorsports applications, especially where you're going to be making a decent amount of power, driving the car hard a lot, even with you know really, uh, you know, PBG or Alvin's gears or whatnot, the five speeds are just not as reliable as, as a stock six speed transmission is. Is there a power crossover point where you would say you highly recommend you really want to have a six speed beyond a certain power level? We've always said 350 foot pounds of torque at, at the wheels is really kind of that threshold. And, and honestly, I would say even like regardless of the gear set you put into it, I would still stick by that. I think, you know, with, with a PPG or an Albans or some kind of aftermarket upgraded gear set, you might be able to get more longevity out of, out of a five speed, you know, closer to say 400 foot pounds of torque. Um, but just long term, what we've seen is that it, again, you just do not have anywhere near the, the reliability that the six speed has at that torque level or, or above with, with anything done to the five speed. If you go back a long time ago, I uh, made a video with Dave from Rally Spec, and we talked about issues with the five-speed. And, and what it fundamentally comes down to is it's, it's not the gears, it's the design of the box. It, you, you have a really long main uh, shaft, really long input shaft for the five-speed transmission that doesn't really have a lot of bearing support for a lot of that length. And when you're putting a lot of torque load in there, the gears are going to basically push against that main shaft and, and it can get the main shaft to bend. Once that happens, you, you get less tooth overlap. So you have more force that's being placed on a smaller surface area of the gear teeth. And then that's where they can snap. So it's, there's, there's just some structural deficiencies in that five speed compared to the six speed case that, you know, where it just kind of doesn't matter. I mean, Better gears help, but just not enough compared to all of the design improvements that were made in the six-speed. Um, strength for all the six-speeds from the STI is going to be much greater than the five-speed, but you also get the benefit of the differentials that came in the six-speed transmission. So the six-speed comes with the torque biasing front differential for the most part. Um, some of the early ones actually had plated diffs up front, and it comes with a DCCD electronically controlled center differential that... Basically, none of the five speeds over here ever came with. There's a very rare JDM STI Type RA that had a, a uh, basically a DCCD center diff, but it was just with a thumb wheel. Um, and they're they're very rare, and basically they're discontinued. So if you find one and it works, they're they're pretty cool. You can get some of that behavior in a five speed with a six speed, um, or from a six speed in a five speed, but like. I don't think there's any replacement parts for them. So if it, if it should fail, then that's kind of it. You're on your own. So there's just so many like functional benefits from a six speed over the over the five speed. That that's where it, it just really that to us that's just what's made sense for a long time. I mean, I'll I'll use myself as an example. You know, kind of like Joe, I built my five speed because I had to. I had a bearing failure, took out all my bearings and stuff. But I put my uh, or rebuilt my five speed with uh, version six STI gears. And I put in a torque biasing front diff. I had to replace the center diff because it had failed. And I did all of this like six months before we figured out all the pieces of the six-speed swap. And even back then, at that point, I realized that if I would have just could have waited six months and we would have figured this out for about another $1,000 at that time over the version 6 STI gears, even, not even like a PPG or whatever, could have, could have done a six-speed swap. So, yeah, it's just... Now, now knowing what we know and, and discovering or, or figuring out how simply it can be done to, to swap in an SCA 6 speed, it just for most applications, that's where it just makes the most sense. Well, thanks everybody for checking out this week's question of the week. And remember that you can submit your own questions in the comments below or through our direct messages on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate your support as always. And until next time, stay tuned with Flatirons 2.